Wayne Brown here, the brake answer man, one of the leading brake experts. My friends, today we're going to talk about drum brakes versus disc brakes. And I'm going to dispel some myths, raise a few eyebrows, and some people are going to just think I'm crazy. But I will give you the facts, how they are, and you cannot argue with the facts. All right, friends, drum brakes are much more efficient than disc brakes. I repeat, drum brakes are much more efficient than disc brakes. Drum brakes, once they hit 300 PSI, that's all that's ever required. All you need is 300 PSI or less to drum brakes in order to work them at maximum efficiency. Disc brakes, because they're inefficient, need huge amounts of pressure. Three, four, five thousand PSI down at the calipers. That's why you will never find a disc brake car on the planet Earth manufactured with manual disc brakes because it just doesn't work very well. All disc and drum cars they all came with proportioning valves, doesn't whether it matters small, Mopar, Ford, or whatever. They're not really proportioning valves. They're pressure reducers. They were all designed at basically at 250, 275 cut-in. In other words, they altered the pressure zero that's coming in until they reach that spring cut-in point. And then after, say, 250 PSI, they cut the outgoing pressure by one half, greatly reducing it. And this is the, in an attempt to prevent rear wheel slide prematurely. Once again, drum brakes are extremely inefficient. Disc brakes are extremely inefficient. The only problem that we have is drum brakes are very difficult to cool down. Disc brakes cool down rapidly. Once everything gets hot, it loses its coefficient of friction, and therefore you have brake fade. Yes, remember, braking is based on two factors. Thermal energy, the uptake and the dissipation, and the coefficient of friction. Drum brakes actually self-energize. All the old books and the old timers know about this. Let's look here at this drum brake setup. As the drum is turning and you apply the brakes, these shoes move outward. Here we go. As this front shoe contacts the drum, it is pulled down slightly. The rotating drum pulls it down. It pushes on this adjuster, bam, pushing this adjuster back, bam, which pushes this back shoe, bam, hard against the drum. That is why Drum brakes tend to lock up once you reach a certain PSI level. They self-energize. They are extremely efficient. You take two rotating gears and stick a little stick in there and see how well they stop. Now you take a disc right here that's rotating at a thousand RPM and take your two fingers and see how easy it is to stop it. It's almost impossible to stop. That's why you have to have such high pressures. Once again, disc brakes are extremely inefficient. Disc brakes are extremely inefficient. Their big plus is they can cool rapidly because air is circulating all around. We now have the veins and such and such and such. That is the big plus about disc brakes. Disc brakes just allow you to do repeated stops, like in traffic in today's time, over and over again before they get so hot that they lose their coefficient of friction. But if you've got a drum brake car and you're just doing one, maybe two possible panic stops at 60 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour, they're going to be good for one at least, no matter what. Now, People tell you that you can put on disc brakes and you're going to have great brakes. That's all completely a lie. 
Disc brakes are designed for power assist. Yes, there's little tricks that you can do. Use a small bore master cylinder and help out a little bit. But here's the facts, my friend. If you take a B body with manual disc brakes as versus one like with a tandem booster like this, a factory power booster car, the stopping distance at, say, 60 miles an hour is going to be one third greater. Yes, friends. If you take a 68 B body with manual disc brakes and you try to stop it at 60 miles an hour, it's going to take you about 150 plus feet to stop. If you're trying to run manual disc, it's going to take it well over 200 or 210. You just can't generate the pressures needed. Now, I'll tell you, if you really want to change your car, put power brakes on your car first. If you really want to change your car and have a wonderful car to drive, please put power brakes on your drum brake car first. Up until a year and a half ago, it was cost prohibitive. A factory power brake unit tandem Bendix like used on all of the disc brake cars, this thing right here, one of the most powerful boosters on the globe today. This get up sets you back well in excess of a thousand dollars from me because you have to get it all rebuilt and all redone and locating. Well in excess of a thousand dollars. Now you can get these factory units for all the B bodies and the E bodies all the way up through well, 66 through 1974. I urge you to rethink this and call me. Once again, drum brakes are extremely efficient. Disc brakes are extremely inefficient. That's just the way it is. If you want to instantly change your car and you just want to spend $500 on your car, do not put disc brakes on your car. You will have poor braking. If you don't do one without the other, you will have poor braking. Once again, that's why all the manufacturers use pressure decreasers. It's once you hit around 300 PSI, hey, Drum brake's done. It's locked down. You can't ask it to do anymore. Once your stuff's locked, it's locked. Whereas disc brakes, they need thousands of PSI. So, uh, I hope this helped you out. Once again, I just uh, uh, educate with the facts. Ultimately, what you decide to do is completely up to you. I would urge you to call me, though, or contact me, email me, wayne at the ramman.com, 817-691-5996. Every answer you get from me is going to be correct. And I'm not going to promote any brand, not my stuff, not anybody else's. I'm just going to tell you the facts. Most of us are big boys. If we're presented with the correct facts, we know what decisions to make or we wouldn't be where we're at today. All right, my friends. I hope this helped out a few people. And uh, God bless you, Mopar friends. God bless America. Once again, I don't have any clients. All I do is help friends. I love my job. Thanks to all of you folks. Anyway, good night.